Oh, what's this? Oh, it's today's YouTube joke. Well, let's see. The worst thing about getting hit in the face with pie is that it never ends. No, I won't do. The joke's too long. Keep working on it. Actually, that brings up a real pet peeve of mine. So many people think that what makes pi special, well, besides being the ratio of any circle circumference to its diameter, is that it's infinite. Well, first off, pi isn't infinite. It's a number between 3 and 4 for pi's sake. You don't get much more finite than that. Of course, that's not what people mean when they say pi is infinite. They mean that pi's decimal representation never ends. But that's not special either. That's literally true of every single number. Even the number 2 can be written as 2.00 for an infinite number of zeros. It may not be the most interesting decimal representation, but it's still an infinite one. And 9 17 is the number 0 0.5294117647058823 repeated. That is, that same 16-digit sequence repeats forever, which again, never ends. I'm sure some of you are saying that what people mean by that is that pi's decimal representation never repeats indefinitely. And that's true, and yeah, we are getting a little more interesting. Oh, hang on. What do you eat on Tau Day? Two pies? Really? We're going to do a Tau joke on Pi Day? It's not half as funny as you think it is, guys. Keep trying. Now, it's true that pi's decimal representation never repeats indefinitely, and while that is rather curious, it's not really that uncommon. For example, the square root of 2 has the same property. In fact, every irrational number has this property. A rational number, if you remember, is a number that can be written as the ratio of two integers. An irrational number is one that can't be. Curiously, we can prove that rational numbers are precisely those that have a decimal representation that eventually repeats forever. And that irrational numbers are the ones that don't. So the fact that pi has this property that its decimal representation never repeats is really the statement that pi is irrational. Which, while that statement might make all the tau people punch the air, it really isn't all that special of a property. In fact, the rational numbers are what we call countably infinite. That means that we can put them into a one-to-one -one correspondence with the integers. The real numbers are uncountable, meaning that they can't be. To the layman, this means that there are a load more real numbers than there are rational ones. Like, way more. It's also straightforward to show that the union of two countably infinite sets is still countably infinite. But the real numbers are the union of the rational numbers and the irrational numbers. Since the rationals are countable, but the real numbers aren't, it must be that the irrational numbers are uncountable as well. Which means that there are a ton more irrational numbers than rational ones. In fact, there are so many more irrational numbers than rational ones that if you were to select a real number at random, there's practically a 0% chance that you would pick a rational number. This has to do with the fact that the rational numbers are what we call a set of measures zero, but that's well beyond on the scope of this video. So the property that pi is irrational is shared by the vast, vast majority of real numbers. So why then do we think that pi is special simply because it has this incredibly common property? Oh, what's this? Oh. What do mathematicians and airlines have in common? They both like pi lots? Nah, it'll go over everyone's heads. Actually, there is another really cool property that pi has. The number pi is transcendental. And no, that doesn't mean that it's going to be swept up into some spiritual realm where the laws of metaphysics reign supreme. It simply means that it's not the real root of a polynomial with rational coefficients. Numbers that are the real roots of polynomials with rational coefficients are what we call algebraic numbers. It's very likely that almost every number you can think of off the top of your head is algebraic. This isn't because there's a lot of them, but rather because we use them a lot when we first learn arithmetic. For example, all integers, rational numbers, and radicals of integers and rational numbers are algebraic. All the numbers that we've talked about in this video so far, except for pi, are algebraic. But there are some familiar transcendental numbers too. And we already know that pi is transcendental, but so is tau and every other rational multiple of pi. And so is Euler's number e. It's actually exceptionally hard to prove that a number is transcendental. In fact, pi and e were only proved to be transcendental in the late 19th century well over a hundred years after Euler first defined them in the modern sense. However, it is not that hard to prove how many transcendental numbers there are. We proved that the irrational numbers were uncountable by first proving that the rational numbers were countable and then using the fact that the union of the rationals and irrationals equaled the reals, which was an uncountable set. We can do the same with the transcendental numbers. It's a common problem in upper division analysis classes to prove that the algebraic numbers are countable. 
Well, the real numbers are the union of the algebraic numbers and the transcendental numbers. And since the algebraic ones are countable, but the real numbers aren't, this must mean that the transcendental numbers are uncountable. And again, that means that if we were to select a real number at random, it's a practical certainty that we'd pick a transcendental number, even though it'd be really hard to actually prove that that number was transcendental. So while this property is also really common, I think I'll give this one to pi since proving that a number is transcendental is actually really, really hard. And most commonly known numbers are in fact algebraic, but still it really isn't that unique of a property. What truly makes pi special is not the fact that it has an infinite decimal representation or that it's irrational or even transcendental. What really makes pi special is the first quality we mentioned, which is its defining quality. The fact that it's the ratio of any circle's circumference to its diameter. The fact that given any circle, the ratio of its circumference to its diameter is constant is in and of itself a pretty amazing idea, and that's what we should be celebrating on pi day. Oh, all right, what, is it? what do we got this time? Who was the roundest knight at King Arthur's table? Circumference, because he ate too much pie? I guess we're really just not going to get one today, huh? I hope you enjoyed our Pi Day video today. If you did, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. We're on a quest for 500 subscribers, so after you subscribe, if you know anyone that's interested in math, science, or just general edutainment content, please share a video of ours with them. We talked a lot today about the proofs of the countability of various different sets, but didn't really go into a lot of detail about them. If you're interested in seeing videos that actually prove those things, let us know in the comments below. In the meantime, check out this video here that shows the basics of general relativity using mainly just pictures, or this video down here that tells you that PEMDAS is a lie. Oh, what's this? Yes, I know that pi are round. It's the area formula of a circle. Chill out.